Question number eight, Don Mark. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance and asks, does he stand by all his statements? The Honourable Bill English. Mr. Speaker, yes, in the context in which I made. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister, does he stand by his statement in 2010 that his government, quote, welcome beneficial foreign investment and recognise the positive contribution it makes to New Zealand, end of quote? And if so, how does that foreign investment in the housing market now look after the last two months' correction in the market trend? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, I certainly stand by the statement. I'm not, not quite sure uh, where, where the, what the member means about the question in relation to the housing market. Uh, the housing market in Auckland rose rapidly. Uh, it was always likely that at some point it would have to slow down just because people couldn't afford to pay the kind of price multiples that they've been paying. And I doubt that the uh, relatively small flows of foreign investment uh, make much difference to that. Supplementary. <coughs> Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, from his statements, quote, you've got very high levels of debt and if interest rates rise sooner than expected, you're going to be under pressure, end of quote. Can he enlighten the House as to the implications of a Auckland housing market that peaked in September and is now falling? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, no, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't give uh, advice on that particular matter. We don't quite know what's going to happen with the Auckland housing market. Uh, this time last year it slowed in a way a bit similar and then it picked up uh, the following uh, March and April. So we don't, we don't quite know how it will work out, but I do stand by the statement that those who have uh, those who've, uh, borrowed very large amounts of money relative to their income uh, do need to keep in mind that interest rates can rise. Shit, Supplementary. <laughs> Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, what is his view of falling essential pre-sales commitments in apartment complexes taking up to two years to build? with increasing interest rates and the prospect of projects like this foundering and being abandoned? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, look, from a government's point of view, that's the operation of the market. People who are building apartments have taken risks. Uh, they have to get the support of their banks to be able to execute uh, the building of those apartments. And if they can't, then someone else will get them a bit cheaper and probably finish them. That's, how you, that's the kind of adjustment you would expect to be happening in a market that has been running pretty hot. Supplementary. Uh, supplementary question, Ron Mark. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the, to the Minister, does he stand by his statement on 28th of May 2009 that, quote, the government is committed to maintaining national super entitlements at 26 per cent of the average wage to be paid from the age of 65, end of quote. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, I'll just have to check exactly the 26 per cent, but uh, that's what the government's done. So, supplementary. Supplementary question, Ron Mark. Doesn't know that. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, does he stand by his statement on the 4th of October 2005 when he said, quote, an implication of treatyology is that citizenship can and should be divided to express a special status for Māori. This notion runs sharply counter to broad public support for the idea of one law for all, and does he believe he has been true to that statement, or has he reneged? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes. <laughs> Question 